It can be soon cast aside, you know, when, when you when you finish playing. You know, it's difficult to stay in the game, and all, all, all the time, every day I'm on the coaching field and involved in football, I feel I'm privileged. You know, I think it's a privileged opportunity to to be able to get paid to do something what you enjoy. And obviously, I'm doing that now. I'm not playing anymore, but I'm still getting paid. Uh, to, to coach people, manage teams and, and develop young players. People like Gascoigne and, uh, and George Best and that, you know, when, when football ended for them, they couldn't cope with the, they weren't in the spotlight and, you know, unfortunately they turned to having too many drinks and, uh, and that, you know, no, you, you know, once your career's over, you've got to, you've got to be a realist and realise that's it, that's gone, I've got to do something else, you know. I've been lucky because I've always had me work. Uh, I, I've, I've worked for the club, I've been a director, I've been a, an ambassador uh, for the club for the last sort of 15, 16 years. So, you know, I, other than just having the pub, I also have my job at Ellen Road that I'm very proud of and that keeps me in touch as well. I ended up leaving the game and, and, and going to try my, my luck out outside of football. That, that was a big regret because, you know, if I, if I had stayed in football, you know, who knows what, what could have happened. But, you know, you make your decisions, don't you, in life? And I decided that um, I, I would work away from football. Um, and and that, was, that was tough, it was really tough. For any ex-pro, this is what you call grassroots football. Not quite the Premier League, but not quite the pub team. It's semi-pro. And this is where former United player Mark Jackson has managed to stay in the game on the backroom staff at local lead side, Barsley AFC. Uh, my current role is uh, the assistant manager at Farsley AFC uh, and also the head of football at Leeds City College. Those kind of roles tie in together uh, because the college has the academy team which acts as uh, the club's youth team. So basically I'm in charge of the, un uh, the under-19 team and also uh, first team coach and assistant manager with the first team. And I, I kind of sensed it coming, coming to an end, you know I'd had a lot of injuries in my career uh, going along uh, the 15 years I've played, 16 years I've played uh, and it kind of, the recovery time, I think it's more the recovery time after games which gets you a little bit and also coming into the semi-pro game when kind of injuries start affecting your day-to-day your -day life which Obviously with me is going into the college and tutoring and also coaching as well. When you're picking up injuries you can't recover uh, quickly like you used to and when they start to affect your, your day job then I, can't, I, I kind of sensed it with time maybe to, to hang the boots up and concentrate on, on the coaching now which, which I really, really enjoy. You know, it's, some people say it's a, it's a wrench to stop playing. I, I knew the time was right and I'm enjoying the coaching side of it and management side of it that much that it wasn't too much. You know, I'm still joining with the lads of five sides now and again, uh, but obviously I've been a little bit unfitter nowadays. I can't keep up with them. And also when you see the young lads coming through uh, at the club, uh, you know, you, you don't want to stifle them. I think there was one point there was a, a couple of centre-halves coming through at the club and kind of me playing with holding them back, I thought. You know, and they might not have had my experience or stuff like that, but for them to get that experience, they needed to play. So I knew the time was right to, to move into the coaching side of things. I didn't really start thinking about coaching, not up until about eight years ago, nine years ago or something like that. Uh, when I was at Leeds and Scunthorpe, which was my next club, I wasn't really interested in coaching. You know, I didn't see that. I was fully focused on the playing side of things and, you know, maybe I should have had a long-term vision and maybe started my coaching badges a little bit earlier, but kind of was, I was fully focused on my playing and it was only when I moved to Kidderminster uh, that I started wanting to get into the coaching side of it, enjoyed it. Uh, did a reasonably good job at it, so I started working towards all my coaching badges, and which, you know, I'm, I'm still working towards now. Uh, but I've managed to get up there with with uh, achieving my air license. So it's just about learning and developing yourself as a as a coach because it's totally different from playing. The most important thing for us this afternoon is the way we go about our business in respect of getting the ball back when we lose it. And the reason why I say that is. The way we're going to set up this afternoon um, is the same as last Saturday with Avi up top by yourself. But I think this afternoon we'll get more more possession wise around AD. Okay, Jacko, you out to that? 
slick, wet, we can move the ball well. You know, I, I always go into games on a Saturday and look at how we've performed in training and stuff like that. And I thought Tuesday night, I thought Thursday night was great. The tempo of the sessions was what I expect, what we expect. And it, it fills me with confidence. But like uh, padding them away, you can't take anybody for granted in this league. If we're not on it, you've got a chance of getting done, turned over. All right, so be on, be on our game. The picture of suit is out there. The way we play in suits is get the ball down and play. The two years I had as a, as a YTS, what, the, what they used to be called then, coming through at 16, 17 and 18, those two years are kind of, I think they've kind of in, ingrained uh, a discipline into, into how I am now and how I am as a, as a person and a human being. You know, working with the likes of Paul Hart and Eddie Gray, who were in charge of the academy back then. Uh, they installed a lot of discipline and things like that. And just the camaraderie with the other players in the, in the youth team was, was a fantastic time for myself. Uh, moving on to that at 18, then making your debut is obviously a, a special time for any player. And to make that for your hometown club is, is, is a dream come true. Uh, you know, I grew up just down the road in Beeston uh, before moving uh, up to Pudsey. So, you know, it, it's kind of a stone's throw away from Ellen Road, where I, where I used to play up to 10 years old. So to make your debut uh, it, it, is, it was a fantastic time for myself. Uh, and to go on and to play, I think it was 22, 23 games for the first team, uh, that was an achievement, what will stay with me for the rest of my life, you know. Uh, I'd, like to, I'd like it to have been more, you know, but to have them 23 games with the first team, I, I look back fondly on those memories. Kind of come, come to a point where I needed to play, I got to an age of 22. Uh, I was involved with the squad. Uh, with, David O'Leary there, I can remember being involved in a few squads, going to Maritimo, I think it was, uh, in the European. There was a chance to, to go out on loan, which I went out on loan to Huddersfield and Barnsley. Uh, but I just got to an age there where I just felt I needed to play. I needed to, I needed to be playing week in, week out. Uh, that's why I took the decision to, 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 to move down to Scunthorpe. You know, it was a fair few leagues drop, but the, 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 the chance to play full-time football and, and, and regular football kind of swayed me a little bit and I knew I had to take that step. So yeah, it was a little bit of a wrench, but like you asked me about my time, it, when I was ready to retire, I was ready to move on then and play some football. So, you know, I, I have no regrets on it. My debut, you know, playing at Old Trafford was a fantastic achievement. You know, uh, the rivalry between Leeds and Man U at that time was really, really big. And to be able to walk on the pitch against, uh, you're playing against Roy Keane and you're playing against Eric Cantona, I think he scored the goal in that, in that game. And we, we lost 1-0. But to, to play in those kind of stadiums, in those big games, uh, like I say, I've got their memories now that they can never be taken away from me. You don't leave school now till you're 16, so... Um, but I was a very confident 15, you know, I felt I was ready to play. Other people might have thought not, but... Um, I always remember when Don... I was brushing the stands like we all had to do in them days, and Don called me from the stands and said, uh, Billy's not got back from Scotland, so you're going to be playing tomorrow. And I've got to be quite honest with you, I, was such, I had such self-belief, I said to myself, well, what's took you so long, you know, and that, but that's how you've got to feel if you're going to be a, a top footballer, you've got to believe that, you know, you're the man and you've got to do it, you know.